Naoki Urasawa's Monster is one of the most gripping and effective fictional tales that I've ever experienced. Despite the plot playing a huge role in Monster, the story placed the greatest emphasis on delving into the psychology of its characters. And this careful look into the internal workings of its characters was essential for all the emotional payoff that we receive when the 74 episodes are said and done. The show introduces these characters, established the dynamics of their personality, and subtly wove aspects of each of the major characters into its overarching themes and moral issues, such as the nature of man, identity, and nature versus nurture. And then, our perspectives on these themes and ideas begin constantly shifting, as these characters that we've grown to know so well begin to change throughout this story. This is a huge reason as to why the series is so engaging the entire way through. Monster did this so intricately and skillfully that I was blown away. The character development in this series was immaculate. And in my opinion, the two characters that developed the most during this tale are two prominent, yet rather undervalued characters. Ava Heinemann and Detective Heinrich Lunge. These two are definitely important characters, but they're firmly placed in supportive roles for most of the series. While characters like Tenma, Johan, Nina, and Grimmer take the spotlight, Ava and Lunge play their understated roles and the series develops them well. So well, in fact, that their development feels so natural that it's almost overlooked. Lunge is a more significant character than Ava for sure, but regardless, the two are both far from the main focus of the story. Immediately after finishing the series, my thoughts were nowhere near these two's character arcs. I was mourning Grimmer, thinking about Tenma's journey, about Nina's enlightenment. I was thinking about all of this so much that I overlooked the two most developed characters in the show. Ava and Lunge are undeniably two of the most fleshed out and developed characters in Monster. They completely change throughout the 74 episodes, slowly but surely. And this fantastic development is not without a purpose either. Both character arcs contribute to the themes tackled in the show, and especially to Monster's stance that the culmination of many aspects of oneself and experiences is what truly molds a person. For me, Lunge is one of the most interesting characters in Monster, and definitely one of Urasawa's most well-crafted individuals. There are so many little details to him that add depth and complexity. While he doesn't have the most unique character arc in the series, it did its job and hit home emotionally in all the right places. His character design and characterization stood out just enough so that Lunge distinguished himself, yet not so much that he felt out of place in the series. He just felt real, despite how robotic he was. And this is thanks to all the flavor that goes into Lunge's character. His finger tapping was a quirk of his character that I loved and was always a great indication of when the man was seriously trying to work something out. Lunge's development is more understated and subtle than Ava's, but compare a metaphorical snapshot of his characterization at the beginning and the end of the show, and it's clear that this man experienced so much growth. Lunge is an intelligent and analytical man who is tasked with solving the mysterious murders at the beginning of the series. He takes his detective work deadly serious. He's completely driven by his job, he thinks of nothing else, and he's extremely stubborn. He is so deep into his work that his wife and daughter have left him, and his daughter even got pregnant without him knowing. He often just ignores his family. For example, he misses a precious afternoon with his daughter and grandchild for work, and he seems pretty unfazed by his coldness. Lunge is quite obviously obsessive with his duties, and unhealthily so. He's not living, he's working. He doesn't enjoy anything unless you count his self-depreciating drive for work enjoyment. And his irrational and near-insane pursuit of Tenma throughout the first half of the show accentuates this even further. His early role solidified him as a primary antagonist in the series, a menacing, contrasting foil for the compassionate and caring Tenma. For me, this aspect of Lunge represented a small portion of the existential, nihilistic elements of Monster. Not in the sense that he himself was nihilistic, but that his life is portrayed in the way that makes the audience think. If this is all that you're living for, is living even worth it for you? Throughout the first half or so of the series, Lunge relentlessly against all logic pursues Tenma and sets out to prove him a murderer. His belief in his own intuition is so strong that he ignores quantitative evidence to pursue a dead end, 
and tears apart his own family life even further. But things about Lungay start to change. He soon comes to a realization, in one of my absolute favorite scenes, I might add, where he must confront the fact that his fairy tale of Tenma being a murderer is just that, pure fantasy. The scene in question was shot so beautifully, and the apologetic resignation in Lungay's tone as he laments his failure says volumes. And as soon as he begins believing in Tenma's innocence and Johan's existence, everything about Lungay changes. Lungay realizes that the things that he's been doing and the approach that he has had towards his job and life may have been flawed, and so he makes some adjustments. In the light of his epiphany, he starts researching Johan, but he takes special care to go about it in a new way and be creative with his problem solving. He mingles with businessmen, he treats his investigation as a self-proclaimed vacation to Prague, he partakes in a beer or two. Lunge loosens up, and to his credit, this actually doesn't seem like a big adjustment for him to make. I think that the difficulty for him was realizing that he had to change, rather than changing himself. He now has a more lighthearted and relatively fun demeanor, and this allows his mind to become more focused in his quest for the truth. He's less robotic, and engages in warmer and more human interactions. This is the first stage of his character arc, but the second turning point in Lungay's development comes in the final few episodes of the series. Along the path towards finding the truth in Ruinheim, an arc in which Lungay strikes up an unlikely but heartwarming friendship with Wolfgang Grimmer and provides Tenma with a face-to-face -face apology, he finds Roberto obstructing his quest. Roberto preys upon Lungay's objective drawbacks as a person and begins a long-winded, taunting speech. He insults Lungay's obsessive drive for his job, the way he shuns familiar responsibilities, and he insults his abilities as a father and a husband. Lungay then becomes infuriated and loses his cool. He shows by far the most emotion that we've ever seen from him throughout the series here, and this proves that these antisocial aspects of his personality are actually insecurities of his. He truly does care, and I think that the truth of Roberto's words stung and made him self-reflect and realize that although he made an obvious change in his life, more was required for true fulfillment. He would not be proud of his life were it to end here. In this scene, I was genuinely scared that Lungay was going to be killed, so I had obviously started caring about him. And this is why his warmer characterization in the last third or so of the series worked wonders for his character. Luckily for him and our protagonists, Lungay was able to subdue and eventually kill Roberto, and he lives to fight and change another day. In the time between the Ruinheim incident and the final episode, Lungay has pretty obviously become much more of a caring and sentimental person than he was at the start. He sadly laments the all-too-soon death of his friend, Grimmer, and Lungay has begun rebuilding the bridges that he had previously burnt down. Notably, he is making an effort to become a part of his family's life. He retires as an officer of the BKA, and becomes a professor at a police academy to allow himself to spend more free time with his daughter and grandson. Now even though most of this contact is just via email, this is still a gigantic change in Lungay's life. It's only a little bit of progress, but it is a huge development if you look at what Lungay started out as, and the man he is now trying to be. If Lunge and his daughter were eating dinner together every week by this point, it wouldn't have been plausible or believable, given what we know about his situation. Little touches like this throughout Monster are intricate, but they add up over time to feed into the very realistic nature that the show and the series has. Lunge is so diverse that at different parts in his arc, his character has a different thematic impact. In his earlier, darker, and almost existential acts of his arc, he gives a lot of weight to the darker side of Monster, the part fueled by Johan. But as he grows and shows his emotions and his underlying humanity later on, Lunge actually proves that some of Tenma's positive feelings on humanity are well founded. Overall, I just really appreciate a character with a fully fleshed out developmental arc, and Lunge was a prime example of this. For most people who have watched the series, one specific word comes to mind when the name Ava comes up. And I get this sentiment, I totally do. Ava is definitely a psychotic bitch throughout a good portion of the story. 
She's selfish, materialistic, obnoxious, elitist. Early in the series, one of the primary themes in Monster is brought to the foreground when Ava exclaims that not all people are created equal, and that socioeconomic status, reputation, finances, and more cause differences in how valuable people's lives are. Tenma's shock at this endears the audience to him and detaches them from Ava while establishing one of the issues that the series tackles. For this scene and so many others, Ava is just an all-around completely unlikable character. But she's far deeper than her actions would have us believe, and if we pick apart her history and characterization, it makes total sense that she acts the way she does. I think that with a character like Ava, knowing where she comes from is so important because childhood environments and parent-child dynamics can be so pivotal in shaping who a person becomes. To start off, let's look at Ava's wealthy father, Udo Heinemann. This is Tenma's boss at the beginning of the series, the owner of Eisler Memorial Hospital, and by far one of the most obnoxious and immoral men in the entirety of the show. He prioritizes money and fame over people's lives. He values certain lives over others, depending on how they would benefit him. From the limited amount of screen time that he has, Udo definitely seems like a man who is unfeeling and incapable of proper love and Ava had to grow up with this man as her father. So, when Ava says to Tenma that not all people are created equal, the sad thing about this is that it comes directly from what her father has taught to her, and what has been ingrained in her. She has grown to hold great importance in material things, and she also probably comes from a childhood likely devoid of love and affection. So Ava is a woman who, probably subconsciously, is starved of love and wishes to develop intimate connections with others during her adult life. During the early episodes of the show, she is in a committed relationship with Tenma, a truly caring and loving man, and while she notably brushes off his more emotional gestures, such as romantic picnics, it's obvious that Tenma is the exact type of person that Ava needs in her life, someone capable of providing her with affection and emotional stability. But there's a big problem. Ava is emotionally immature and has never dealt with proper loss before. An incredibly unfortunate combination. Ava doesn't really realize what she had until it was gone. When she loses Tenma, she loses her rock, stability, and source of emotional support and affection. Not to mention that she was devastated by the loss of her father, who she did care for despite his probable unhealthy raising of her. After the hammer blow of her father's death and the breakup with Tenma, Ava sinks to the depths at this point in the story. She tries to get back with Tenma, but he flat out rejects her due to her materialistic desires, which I found ironic because of her subconscious longing for love. Ava needs and craves love so desperately, but she is just socially ill-equipped to welcome it into her life, which makes her a very lonely person. She spends the next seven years spiraling further downward, going through three failed marriages, and falling deep into alcoholism. She nearly claws her way back by setting up a date with a man, only to find that he has gotten together with his former partner. Her actions at this point were nothing short of repulsive, but regardless I was fascinated to find that I did feel some sympathy for this clearly broken and emotionally malnourished person. I'm probably just too soft. After this, nothing really changes with Ava for a while. She drinks, rages, and stumbles through life depressingly. She sets her mind on putting Tenma in jail for the death of her father, but something tells me that she just used this as an outlet, rather than actually believing in Tenma's guilt. She then gets kidnapped by Roberto and saved by Tenma. And Ava is amazed that Tenma still harbors concern and care for her after all that she's done. And this just flicks a little switch in her mind, and sets her off on the path to development and self-improvement. Ava then slowly but surely changes her approach to life. Nothing changes immediately and she retains plenty of her bad habits, but she takes steps towards change. She starts seeing Dr. Reichwein for her alcoholism, begins coming around to letting herself be more open, and begins changing her attitude on Tenma. Eventually, she finally consciously realizes that Tenma is all that she had been looking for in life, and that there is nothing wrong with opening up. Ava eventually does a complete 180 on Tenma, and decides that she wants to testify for his innocence after he's brought to jail. I won't go much into the specifics of the story here, but the important thing for Ava is that she now has a purpose, uncovering Johan's plans in order to prove Tenma's innocence. 
But nothing is ever as simple as a direct trajectory to self-improvement, and Ava suffers a bit of a stumble in the road. In figuring out what she wants in life, she realizes that she has been a really horrible person. In reflecting upon this, Ava soon comes to think of herself as worthless and undeserving of the love that she craves. She puts herself in familiar high society situations at the behest of Peter Chapik in order to feel in power and tended to again, but it's all empty to her and she begins to self-loathe. She grows a relationship with Martin, but that one was doomed from the start and ended nearly as soon as it started with Martin's tragic demise. She is devastated and confesses to Tenma that she hasn't deserved anything good that has happened to her and she doesn't feel like her life was worth Martin's sacrifice. She has entered a stage in development where she's lamenting everything that she has done. She has changed. She is now more emotionally mature, but this almost makes her hurt even more. She's in a hole and having trouble getting out. So she channels all of this into the purpose of pursuing Johan and those involved with his plans. After she does her part and fulfills her purpose, she travels back to Munich to remain in safety with friends such as Dieter and Dr. Reichwein. Slowly and through the care of these new friends, Ava realizes self-worth and completes her development, both through the final act of the story and the years following the climax in Ruinheim. At the conclusion of the series and her arc, Ava has begun pursuing her passion as a career. She has achieved peace of mind and is content with life for probably the first time ever. She has friends and people that care for her, and she has found a happy place for herself in the world, which in the end was all that she really wanted from the beginning. She just never knew it. Ava's upbringing naturally made her a cynical and negative person, but through a realization of what she wanted in life and how she wished to live, she contributed to Monster's overall message that it is never too late to change. There is an episode in the show, episode 14, that just focuses on Ava and Lunge. It's a low-key chapter, one that simply follows these two people as they go through their lives. It's actually one of my favorite episodes in the show, for the deep glimpse at how broken these people truly are at that point in the story. Ava has absolutely lost it, and Lunge is robotic, detached, and been shut out from his melancholy family. Having seen the show in its entirety, witnessing this episode upon rewatch is quite the eye-opener considering where these two end up. One of the themes that Monster addresses is that life experience and learning foster development, for better or for worse. It's never too late to change oneself, and we humans are constantly evolving, never in stasis. This is shown through the changes seen in the kids who undergo experiments throughout the show and through characters like Richard Braun, but it's so prominent in Ava Heinemann and Detective Lunge. These two not only act as foils for some of the other characters in the series in order to let those characters' qualities shine, but they're intimately explored and fleshed out individuals in their own right. Their narrative importance is obvious, and Monster's story wouldn't have been as successful without them. <laughs>